My name is Julia. Welcome to Community Living Room at Home. Today I'm going to show you how to make a concertina book. A concertina book works really well as a sketchbook or a photo album and I'm going to show you how you can do either. All right. To make your concertina book you're going to need a few basic materials. You're going to need some good quality paper. Drawing paper or cartridge paper works very well. For the cover, you're going to need some decorative paper. And the decorative paper can be gift wrap, craft paper, or even some wallpaper. Try recycling, it's always a good idea. And you're also going to need some card. So mount card will work very well, but so will an old cereal packet. Finally, you're going to need some decorative pieces to finish off and that could be some ribbon, some beads, a button even. Now, your tools. Your basic toolkit includes some good glue, a pair of scissors, a sharp pencil, a ruler, and a wooden spoon. A couple of extras that aren't essential but you may find useful include a scalpel, a bradle and half a peg. I'll tell you about that later. I'm going to begin with the inside of the book. To make the inside of the book I use two long pieces of paper. This paper is good quality printing paper but you can also use cartridge paper or even sugar paper. The most fiddly bit is where we'll start and after that it's going to be a breeze. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, make a measurement at the bottom of my paper and that measurement is three centimetres. I'm going to make that three centre measurement all the way along the paper. And what I do, just a little handy tip here, is I take my pencil and I mark it at three centimetres, which is the length that I want. It's just easier to see. And I mark it at the beginning and the end, so that as I drag it along, it's easy for you to see where the three centimetre mark is. Okay, so, I'm marking the three centimetre mark several times all the way along the paper. When I've done that, I join the dots. Okay, so I take my ruler and I join the dots. All the way along the paper. Okay, once I've joined the dots up, what I need to do is I need to score that pencil line. Okay, now scoring that pencil line, you can do with a number of different things. The traditional tool that bookmakers use is a, called a bone folder, but you probably won't have one of those at home. So I've got a couple of different alternatives. One of them is a bradle. A bradle is a tool that you'll find in most household toolboxes. You can also use an old biro that the ink has run out. That works very well. What you do is you score along the line that you've drawn. Now, I'm scoring the line against a ruler. What I sh should say to you is make sure that you don't press down so hard that you cut the paper right through. The reason we do that is because it makes it much easier to fold. You see, it's very fiddly making a fold when you've got a long piece of paper. But by scoring the line, it makes it a lot easier. 
I'm using the ruler because it helps me fold. And just to make sure that it stays in place, I'm going to use my wooden spoon. And I press down firmly along the fold. I'm going to take my piece of paper and I'm going to fold it in half. Line it up nice and neatly and press down. To make your fold nice and neat, use the spoon. Your spoon, your bone folder, your peg. Next I'm going to make another fold. I'm going to take one end and I'm going to bring it to the centre. I bring it to the centre like that and press down on the fold with my wooden spoon. Then I'm going to do exactly the same at the other end. Now, if you've ever made a fan, maybe when you were back at school, you'll see this is a quite familiar process. Again, I'm going to take one end and I'm going to fold it and bring it to the line of the previous fold. I take the fold, I fold it, and I bring those two folds to the centre. Then we do the same at the other side. Pressing down with the wooden spoon to make a firm fold. There we have a concertina. And we're going to make two of those. So here's one I've made earlier. And I'm going to join those together. To join them together, I'm going to use a piece of craft paper. This piece of craft paper is exactly the same height and a couple of centimetres each side, folded in half, and I'm going to cover that in glue. So, I'm going to cover that in Pritt stick. Bring those together. And you stick those together, and then you've got a nice long concertina for your book. Okay, there we are. Of course, if you can get yourself a longer piece of paper, you don't need to stick it in the middle and you can do the fold with a long piece of paper. It's up to you. Alternatively, if you've got some short pieces of paper, you can put several short pieces of paper together and make some decorative folds around the edges. Right, I'm going to put that to one side. That's going to be the inside of your book. Okay, next we're going to make the cover of the book. To make the cover of the book, we need two pieces of card. Those pieces of card need to be slightly bigger than each end of your book. I take some decorative paper to cover my pieces of card. I'm going to cover this piece of card. I want the paper to be about an inch and a half round the edge of the card. So I'm just going to make sure that it is by cutting the excess off. So we'll just draw a line here. You don't have to be absolutely accurate.
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the piece of paper just to the edge and then fold it back again. And I'm going to do that all the way round. Now, what I'm going to do now is snip those corners off, okay? So you've got four little corners and I want you to snip those off. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to do it at a slight angle. Make sure that you don't cut past the fold. Now your paper is ready to cover your card. Next, I take the Pritt stick and I put it all over one side of the paper. Okay, make sure you get into every corner. And all across the middle as well. Okay, don't worry, be, don't be shy. Use plenty of glue. Okay. I think that's quite a lot of glue on there. But I'm just going to make sure that it sticks. And to do that, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the edge of the card as well. Okay. That's just on the edges. Next, I lift the card and place it central. Press it down firmly and take each edge and fold it over. Because I've got plenty of glue, that's sticking down nicely. And just to make sure, I'm going to put a piece of greaseproof paper on the top and I'm going to take my spoon and I'm going to rub firmly stops you getting messy fingers and allows you to press down nice and hard. The grease proof paper will peel away and you now have one cover. Now, this book needs something to open and close it. So what I'm going to use is some braid. This is a nice bit of red braid, but you can also use ribbon or twine. We're going to attach the ribbon. We need a good length of ribbon, which needs to be at least three widths. In fact, let's do four for good measure. And I'm going to stick this to the inside of my cover. You can either do that with a piece of masking tape, nice strong masking tape, or you can do it with a piece of paper. Take the piece of paper and cover it with glue. Make sure that you use plenty of glue. Okay, so there we are, lots of glue. You take the ribbon or braid and place it in the centre and cover it over with the piece of well glued paper. There we are. Press down firmly. Once again, if you want to use the baking sheet and the spoon, just to make sure everything's firmly in place. So, that's gonna be the inside. I'm going to put the cover onto the book. And to do that, again, we're gonna be quite generous with the glue, okay? So we'll take one side of my inside, one end like this, see, it's a big concertina, like this. And I'm gonna cover that in glue. Here we go. Make sure that you cover the whole of that page with glue. When I've done that, I'm going to stick that firmly 
in the centre of my cover. And what I do is I take a bit of scrap paper, put that on top, and rub it firmly into place. So I'm rubbing it with my spoon, just applies a bit of pressure so it sticks better. Then we go to the other end of my concertina and we cover that with glue as well. So remember, cover the whole page with glue. Place it in the centre. Rub firmly. And finally, we're going to put some decorative touches to our concertina book. I like to take my braid or ribbon and add something to the end, a bead or a button. And now I'm going to add a decorative bead. To do that, I take the braid and I thread it through. I thread it through and then I tie a knot. I tie that one, I tie it twice. Depending on the size of your hole, you might need to try it again, but that's just right. Okay. So here we have the completed concertina book with pockets. And why pockets, you may ask? That's a good question. Well, here's what I made earlier. As you can see, the pockets are great for putting in photographs, prints and drawings. You can also draw pictures and stamp into the book. It's great for memorabilia and as you can see, here we have a concertina book photo album. The pockets are ideal for fitting in photographs. And you can work with it any way you like. Be creative, be inspired, make a special memory book for a friend. Make something unique, a gift. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. So, have a go. Make some concertina books of your own and then begin to explore the art of bookmaking. Thank you. Mm -hmm.